Welcome back to Lagarde Products. We're excited you're joining us today. We have a super cool project to share with you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and we'll get back to you. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, we're getting ready to coat the counter. I've noticed some spots that we want to patch. We're just using some easy sand. It's like a five minute uh, drywall compound. You mix it with water. I mix it with hot water so it kicks off a lot faster. And you want it a paste-like consistency that'll kind of just sag and not, not drop off there. So I got this mixed up real simple. What we're gonna do, we're gonna patch this little joint here. Because if we don't patch that, sometimes the metallics will settle there and then you'll see like this ghost line. It'll be flat and smooth, but you'll see a ghost line from a metallic settling in there. And then another spot is these corners are kind of loose a little. Everywhere else is stuck really good, so I just want to fill that edge in so the epoxy doesn't drip down and we have, looks like a crack in the counter. So if it's loose all throughout, you want to peel the stuff off, but this is pretty stuck everywhere, so I'm not really worried about it. So we're just going to put some of this down here. So that's basically all we want to do there. And then we're just gonna push some of this into this edge, get it down in there to fill that seam. Same thing with this one right here. All I'm trying to do is fill that, that gap that's there. I'm just pushing that into that gap. And then when I wipe this clean, you should see a little white strip of where this filled it in. see the white there that filled it in. Same thing right here. So those are really the only problem areas. Another thing I want to point out is if you have square edges, make sure you sand those. Even though this is a Formica square edge, you can sand it with 80 grit sandpaper and a palm sander. Notice we've just rounded these just a little bit. If you don't round that, the epoxy is not going to want to flow over easy and your edges are going to be a, kind of difficult to make them look good. You're going to have to keep messing with them. So rounding this edge all the edges is gonna let the resin flow over nice and make these edges look really good. So always make sure you sand the square edges. All right, we're at the priming stage. Um, real simple, we're not gonna show you all the primer because this is just like a YouTube video. We have actual tutorials that show every step of the process when you guys order a counter kit. But just, just to reiterate, when you guys are using nap rollers, we use a three inch nap roller, always de-shed it, wrap tape on it, it'll pull off the loose fibers that are on the roller. Um, do that a couple times. Use some really sticky tape if you can. Blue tape doesn't work the best because it's not as sticky. We like to use that yellow painter's tape. So we've already de-shedded. Counters are prepped, ready to go. I'm just gonna kind of soak this up for a minute, get this roller saturated really good. And then I'm just gonna roll down the middle. Sometimes when you're going over old Formica, you might have some spots that'll fish shine and kind of separate. I think we're gonna have one right here. Um, and we've already, and, and we wiped this down with denatured alcohol and a rag. So we, we already really cleaned the countertop really good. But still, sometimes there's leftover silicone or, or who knows what that's gonna affect that resin. So I'll show you how to 
combat that. We just let the resin set up a little bit and then we roll over it again and it'll get rid of those spots. You can see we're getting a lot of fish eyes on this counter. Separation, surface tension, all these little dots. Don't start freaking out, not a big deal. Once this sets up a little and gets sticky, we'll roll over that and it'll fill all that in. So we're gonna pour the base coat down the middle around this whole counter. And since it's kind of a weird shape, we'll start out smaller and we'll come back and add to the spots. So again, trying to keep it all in the middle. Try to get these beads as even as we can. And the nice thing about, about this is if we have it too thick somewhere, we can just scoop it back in the bucket, pour it somewhere else. If it's too thin, we can pour it where it's thin. So I'm gonna set this because it's gonna drip back in the corner. So I'm not stepping in a bunch of drips already. I'm gonna take my thread snap roller. We've really de-shedded it good with the tape, rolling it on some tape. And we're just gonna cross roll all this epoxy. I'm not trying to push it off the edge yet. I just want to get this top kind of coated, staying away from the edges because I don't want it dripping off yet because it's really fluid now. So we get the top done and then we work on our edges. Plus I want to make sure I have a good thick coat everywhere. And keep in mind, we still got a lot of highlights to pour out here. We're doing silver and titanium. All right, so I'm gonna set this in the five gallon bucket just in case I need to use it again. Just like that. And I'm gonna take our highlights that I have mixed up ready to go. And we're gonna start our vein. So I'm thinking if you wanted a vein down the middle, we're gonna splice it off. We're basically gonna run a vein through here somehow. That way when the sink's in, it kind of connects to the sink and then we'll split it off going out that way. So we're just gonna start like that. Again, I don't want to pour out a 
I don't want to pour out all the epoxy. I want to make sure I have some left over in case I want to add to it. Obviously, we're going to add to this one. That's why we have another silver. And if you wanted to get some, some skinny veins out throughout the counter, we can just kind of drizzle some. Notice how I try to connect them. If they come off, try to connect that back in. That was our silver. We're gonna squeeze this and pour right on the edge of the big ones. It's a similar color, but it's a little darker. Pretty nice approval. And you can still blend the counters after you do this. It will create some cool effects because it will kind of encapsulate it into the epoxy. All right, so I don't want to over blend this. I want to keep this more of a solid silver. So I'm going to use my hands to blend these skinny veins and just kind of running through just real quick, just using my fingers the tips of my fingers. Just kind of run through it real quick. Make sure I'm coming off the counter. This will just kind of make it look like more of a natural fracture bank. Instead of just, just a, like a line that we poured out. So there's those. I'll show you. I'll show you two two different ways to blend the, the big ones. We'll use our finger the same way, and then I'll show you the squeegee because that's kind of what she wanted to do. So we're gonna have to do that. But if you just run your finger along that edge, it's gonna help blend that in and give it that natural look. Over the black is if I run my finger just through the middle of the vein, it'll pull some of that black out. And what I mean by that is just kind of randomly running that through, it's gonna pull some of that black out through that silver. Not a lot, just some little fracture, fracture veins. We're just gonna lightly blend that edge in. See how it gives you a different effect. And I like to hit the whole counter. I'm not moving the epoxy, I'm just kind of skimming across the surface. You can see it kind of just really blends that in a lot softer of a of a look. Now just such a hard edge. And that was the 
the lift that she wanted to do. So we're just doing that. I just wanted to show you a couple options. thing we want to do, I always like to roll my edges. What happens is it starts to get thin on there and then we spray all the, the dispersing effects. And sometimes it'll create little barriers. The epoxy will start flowing over in random shapes. Don't worry about screwing up your design because this is still going to flow over and look really nice. We just want to make sure we blend in that dispersing effect and get a good on these edges so they blend in and flow over easy. And if it sounds really sticky somewhere, you want to get a little more epoxy on your roller and roll that area because it's obviously a little too thin. And that's pretty much it. So when you're doing dispersing effects, sometimes you'll get fish eyes. They, we call them fish eyes. Um, it's basically surface tension that's pushing pushing the epoxy away and it goes down to the primer. If you get those, they're, they're just little circle dots. You just pat them in with your finger, they'll level out. So you wanna make sure you hit any of those spots. Those usually happen where it's thin, where the resin is thin on the edges. Sometimes we get them out in the middle, but you wanna pat those in so that resin can fill that area and level out. But we just take a paint stick, run it on the edge, See how it's knocking all those drips off? It's gonna keep dripping again because it's so fluid. But after about an hour, it'll start to set up and become sticky. And it'll eventually stop dripping after about an hour, hour and a half. And you won't have to scrape it anymore. All right, so before we top coat, we're gonna sand some areas. Uh, someone touched it right here when it was still a little tacky, we have some indents we're gonna sand down, then we're gonna sand down some of these edges um, and any imperfections in the surface. I'm using 320 grit sandpaper, really, really fine. We don't wanna scuff it up before the top coat. You guys are sanding the, the tops, it ain't really a big deal. When you're doing the faces or corners, you really wanna be careful. Maybe even hit those by hand um, and just go really slow because you don't wanna sand through any of these spots on the faces or corners. Okay, so it's top coat time. We're using our WB Urethane Gloss. I'm using the 3 8 snap roller. We've de-shedded it with the tape so we've got any loose fibers off of here. And we're gonna be using the roller tray we want to just take a second, get this roller nice and soaked up.
Hey guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you guys can stay updated on our latest videos. And if you have any cool ideas for a project, we'd love to hear from you guys. So let us know in the comment section down below. And don't forget to hit that like button. We'll see you guys next time.